Let's get reaction now from Jerry Diaz, the national president at Unifor, which does not represent workers at any of the facilities uh, that are uh, part of this report, but does represent many workers at long-term care facilities. Jerry, what was your reaction to these findings from the military? I was horrified. I mean, I, I just keep thinking about the residents, their families, uh, what the families are going through, what the residents went through. I think about the last couple of years of my mother's life that she spent in Hillsdale Manor in Oshawa. There's no excuse uh, for any of this. Uh, this system has been broken for years. Frankly, it really started to go off the rails back in 1995 when Mike Harris was the premier and he really started to deregulate the industry, moved more to privatization, uh, moved more to less hours, less people. So he really was, uh, you know, was flouting the for-profit model. And here we are today, 25 years later, with one disaster on our hands. One of the facilities mentioned in the Canadian Forces report, uh, as we've been mentioning this morning, was owned by Siena Senior Living. It's publicly traded, to your point. Uh, in a statement released last night, the firm said it pledged to work with the government to address the issues raised in the report. What's your understanding of that work? What, what are the conversations taking place between the private players and the government at this stage? Well, the private players want to stay in the business because it's for profit. And it never should have been for profit in the first place. We should never have our seniors in a system in their last years in an environment where the, where the boss is looking to make a dollar. Um, so this needs to be changed. And if you take a look at the deaths across the country in the long-term care facilities, the, over, the majority have been in for profit. 82% of all deaths today from COVID-19 have been from residents in long-term care facilities. We know that this was, you know, this was heading to this at some time or another. We just didn't expect COVID-19. You can't deregulate the industry to the point where workers have six minutes in the morning, six minutes to get a resident out of bed, to the bathroom, cleaned up, and to the breakfast table. We've been calling for years for a minimum of four hours a day of care for each resident. And it's fallen on deaf ears, frankly, from successive governments uh, for the last 25 years. So, look, there's a lot of blame to go around. A lot of people just haven't been paying attention, and they have to pay attention today. So you're going to be speaking, we mentioned earlier in the program, at a Senate uh, committee this afternoon. I assume you're going to be uh, uh, addressing some of these issues. What is your goal? What are you hoping to accomplish? Well, first of all, that the Senate committee is going to talk about infrastructure. It's going to talk about spending. But we're going to talk about the need for governments to take care of people. Um, the government has moved forward with CERB, with wage, uh, wage subsidies. They've done a lot of very good things. But clearly, we need to take a look at the broader scope. We need to talk about people. We need to take a look at what has transpired and what we're going to do to make sure this never, ever, ever happens again. I'm going to talk about the fact that personal support workers are so dramatically underpaid that they're leaving the industry. I'm going to talk about regulating the industry because workers today are just treated as casual part-timers. Why? So that they don't have to pay them decent wages and provide any benefits. So you have personal support workers by the thousands leaving in the, the industry because they're forced to work in two and three different locations in order to make ends meet. There is a structural flaw with the system and it needs to be fixed. And it needs to start first with having public ownership of these facilities because our seniors deserve so much better. Jerry Diaz, national president at Unifor, thanks very much for your perspective on this development.